It was a sunny day in July in the city of San Diego. I had just moved there from Los Angeles for my general surgery rotation for PA school. I finished work early and went to the beach, a mere two blocks away from my brand new apartment. As I sat up on the sand, I noticed the mole that lay just beneath the bra line of my bathing suit. It looked darker than usual, almost like an ink stain, and it appeared raised. I knew this mole had been there for the past year or so, but I hadn't really taken notice of it until that day. In that moment, I shuddered. I knew something wasn't right. Five weeks later, on a Wednesday afternoon, I went to see my dermatologist, who also happens to be my uncle, and he removed the mole. The following Monday, I received a phone call at work. He said, Sarah, the mole came back positive for melanoma. In a stifled, from Breslow and Clark staging to so many other medical terms in between, the words became a blur, and all I could think of, why has this happened? How has my body deceived me? When I went to see the dermatology oncologist to talk about the next steps, he looked at me square in the eye and said, had I waited six more months, we wouldn't have been having that same conversation. Thankfully, I'm one of the lucky ones, and I get to stand here today. Two surgeries and eight months later, I stand here today and say I'm cancer free. So here's the problem. Skin cancer is the most commonly diagnosed cancer in the United States with five million people treated each year. One person dies every hour from melanoma and only five, skin, uh, only five sunburns increase our risk of melanoma by 80%. The rates of melanomas have doubled over the past decade. Adolescents spend much of their school days in the sun, mostly like coastal communities. And two thirds of the coastal communities are Caucasian, which according to the CDC, is the population that has the highest incidence of skin cancer. So how much does, we were thinking, how much does this adolescent population know about skin cancer and what types of sun safety methods are they using, if any? So because the skin cancer rates are increasing in the young population, um, it's evident that they needed more education. And we thought, right, this is where we come in, um, we thought that early intervention is needed in the population, especially for vulnerable adolescents, right? Because this will create like a nice baseline of education for sun exposure, the dangers of skin cancer, and like, um, I guess we can say, sun safety methods that are available to them. Um, so Sarah's close call, our own individual experiences with the sun, and these statistics basically compelled us, and this is like our thing, uh, compelled us to create, like, plant the seed in the young adolescents of sunwise behavior. So we had the privilege of implementing our intervention at St. Anastasia Catholic School, elementary school in uh, Marina del Rey, California. This school, located just two miles from the beach, invited us to speak to their 6th, 7th, and 8th grade classes. Uh, each class of 35 students uh, gave us the opportunity to speak or, and address a total of 105 students. Um, our intervention <clears throat> included a pretest assessment, a 20-minute PowerPoint presentation, a 15-minute Play-Doh activity, and a post-test assessment. Our presentation included um, basically the, the dangers of, the risks and benefits of the sun, um, the dangers of the sun, um, and um, cancer, who it affects, and how to prevent it. <coughs> So because melanoma is a preventable disease, it's important for adolescents to understand how to avert it before it becomes a problem. Although regular clinical skin checks are an essential part of the uh, cancer prevention process, we all know our skin the best, and so being your own advocate for skin cancer prevention is the best way to go. And with the right knowledge, we have the opportunity to catch skin cancer on our own bodies before anybody else could. So the most interactive part of our intervention was aimed at educating the students how to identify an irregular mole. So each class was broken up into small groups of about five students with one PA student proctor per group. 
And in the small groups, we handed out Play-Doh, as you can see here, and we asked the students if they could illustrate their understanding of the A, B, C, D, E's of irregular moles by sculpting a mole for each letter. So after the activity, um, each group and each small group elected one member to go present the moles that they made, and we had a lot of really interesting moles. A lot of them like to put them right in their forehead, and they were definitely more than the six millimeter cutoff. Um, and they presented their moles to the class. So they went, each student had to go through the ABCDEs from memory without looking at anything. Um, and then at the end, in exchange for their participation, participation, we gave those students some Keck School of Medicine sunglasses as a prize. And then to drive the point home, we handed out custom-made magnets, and one side has a ruler on it so they could measure moles that they might find on their own body or their parents or their friends. And then we uh, defined the ABCDEs there so they could put it on the refrigerator and it would serve as a daily reminder, we hope, for skin checks at home. Um, in addition, we provided a take-home letter to give out to their parents with additional information regarding skin cancer and sun safety from the CDC. Um, so based on our small conver conversion, our pre-post test was reading level five. So bam, we're being health literate, right? Um, but after our first presentation, our, um, our, our teacher pointed out to us that when we're presenting in front of a group of like six, seven, eight graders, um, we have other things to consider. We had um, kind of power PowerPoint images like this showing, you know, female sunbathing, because that's what we were talking about, right? How sunbathing, suntan, sunburns can lead to cancer. Um, he kind of pointed out, you know, when you're presenting in front of a group of, of you know, pre-teens, pre you kind of want to avoid images like this. Mm -hmm. So it was like a dumb moment for us, right? We're presenting in front of a group of pubescent boys. Like, this is not good for them. <laughs> a point that wasn't as well done was that we're also presenting in front of a group of preteen girls who are becoming more self-aware of their body and self-conscious of their body and their body image. So that was like a huge learning experience for us um, in being health literate. Um, and in terms of advocacy, um, in, in addition to our sunrise intervention, when we stood up there, seven females, you know, in our white coats presenting as PA students, most of them looked at us like, uh, what's a PA? One of our students, like, their mom was a PA, she had no idea what she did. Um, so it was like a, a moment for us to kind of advocate for our careers. Um, as, as Holly mentioned, like, we passed out these sunglasses, right, as part of our intervention. These sunglasses were provided by Dr. Ola Henry and the Keck School of Medicine USC Primary Care PA program um, to kind of to spread not only awareness of how to be sun wise and sun, you know, have sun healthy habits, but also kind of for our careers and our, our profession and our school, which was kind of dangerous because we were in Bruin territory at the time. So we spread <laughs> the Trojan family cheer, I guess. So here are the results from our pre and post test. So. The pre-test is in the darker blue and the post-test is in the lighter blue. Um, so we were advised by Ms. Maldonado to go ahead and remove the eighth grade data that we had because it was a little altered. So when we passed back the, uh, passed back the post-test, a lot of the kids weren't answering questions or they were marking all B. They were just being silly. I mean, they're eighth grade kids. Um, yeah, they were just a little silly. So, um, <laughs> this, yeah. so this data here is just from the sixth grade and the seventh grade class which was previously mentioned that there's 35 students in each class. Um, so if we look at objective five here, we can, which was a question, which the questions are right here, about the awareness of, of skin, um, which is like the biggest, the question was which is the biggest organ in the body? And you could see from objective five that this had the largest um, learning curve, um, but actually in the results we saw that there was a split um, between skin and liver as the students had answered. In objective three, you can see there was no change in the knowledge of the kids knowing about the benefits of sun. And then what we didn't expect um, was that much of the, many of the kids had a lot of knowledge about the sun and about skin cancer, so that definitely surprised us as a group. And then as Jimmy mentioned, the kids, and I had mentioned too, the kids were kind of acting silly, so we didn't really expect that, and that's what we didn't really expect throughout that other data. So looking at overall at all of our data, you can see here, at least two children um, had an increase in knowledge about the sun, about skin cancer. So overall, 
I believe that we impacted the students in their understanding of the dangers of skin cancer, the sun, and just general understanding of skin cancer. So as a final reflection in terms of what did these students learn and what was the take home, for one of our stars, we feel we successfully engaged these students in long-term skin care through teaching them self-skin exams um, as part of their routine health. And also by giving them the take-home magnets, um, we noticed as another star that the students were really motivated to share this new knowledge regarding the ABCDEs of skin cancer prevention with their friends, their family members, and help others prevent um, just the damage of the sun as well as skin cancer. Uh, our wish is that the Sunwise intervention um, could become a statewide curriculum implemented in all middle schools. Uh, the one thing that we really appreciated hearing from the students was their motivation to utilize sunscreen more often because of this information. They were aware of the damage of the sun, but they didn't realize that sunscreen needs to be reapplied and used daily. So where do we go from here, right? You all heard that these kids aren't getting enough sun knowledge. They don't know enough. They aren't getting the right advice on what they can do to help themselves. And they're not nervous enough, to be totally honest. So when we hear stories about Sarah, it awakens something within all of us. It makes all of us feel like we need to do something, and we need to do something now. So what we wanted to do is we wanted to hit that younger demographic so that we could impact their future. But now we have the opportunity to talk to all of you. And now we have the opportunity to teach all of you so that you, too, can go out and talk to more youth. And while we did focus on youth, it's important to recognize that these sun safety behaviors are important across the board in all ages. It's never too late to use sunscreen. It's never too late to practice sun safety. So while we planted the seeds with our students, we're taking the flowers and the fruits of our labor and giving it and turning it over to you. We want you to utilize the knowledge that you learned from us, from our mistakes, from our, our successes, and carry that forward. So together we can take these flowers, we can take these fruits and share it. Together we can make sure that the future, our youth, are not getting skin cancer like what our demographic is getting. And together, we can make sure that Sarah doesn't share the same story with these kids. <laughs>